Hey, hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk about the robot arm again and how we can control it either electronically or through a microcontroller, you know, without using the control, something so that we can automate it. But before we get into that, I have got to show you guys something. This package came in the mail today. It's it's Good Friday, okay? I'm Good Friday. Good Lord. It's Black Friday. Day after Thanksgiving. And you can see it comes from Vietnam. No Bai Airport, Phu Minh Ward, Suk Sun District, Hanoi. Commercial invoice, gift, crown ring, JZ00 d4-8 for a value of 99 cents all right except i didn't order anything from vietnam and as you can see this envelope is pretty small but there is something in here i don't have any dealings with any companies in vietnam don't have anything against vietnam I mean, don't get me wrong i just don't have any companies i deal with there and when I do deal with companies like out of China and I give them my shipping information, you know, I tell them learn electronics and the address. This has my name on it. So are you ready to see what the crown ring is? It is a plastic bead. I'm going to focus. It is a plastic bead with a hole in the middle. I have no earthly idea what this is. But anyway, I had to show it to you guys because it's just weird. All right, so we have our robot arm here. And it has five DC motors. There's one down here in the base to control rotation. One here that controls this arm. One here that controls this arm. One here that moves the claw up and down. And one here that opens and closes the claw. And each of these motors are simply controlled with a reversing switch here. Okay, nothing big. Now, grab the manual, and inside the manual it has control box diagram and wiring diagram so that we can see how everything works. And I was playing around with this, and I thought, all right, well, we can, you know, match up what these pins are here with what's going on in the manual and figure out how we can duplicate the signals on these pins. But then I'm thinking I'm overthinking it. We don't want to overthink it. We want to use KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. So what it's doing, it has four AA batteries in here, AA, D batteries in here six volts but they're split down the middle so we have three positive and three negative negative. and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull off this wire here and this controls the rotation now if I hook this wire up to a simple three volt source And we power it up like that and we switch it the polarity that's all there is to it so we just need to do this five times and we'll be good to go with controlling the robot arm but how can we do that? How can we do that either electronically or with a microcontroller or a combination of both? I'm going to show you 
and we're going to use what's called an H bridge. All right, let's do an H bridge here real quick. In the center, we have our motor. And our motor has two conductors coming out of it. We're not going to call them positive or negative. We're just going to call them two conductors. So if we have a rail up here and a rail down here, and in between them, pardon my terrible drawing again, we put a couple of NPN transistors here, and we do the same thing here. We have your basic H bridge. Now we want to control back EMF. So we'll put some diodes in here as well. And now we have our H bridge circuit. So we'll call this Q1. Uh, Q2, yeah, Q3, and Q4. And the way this works is if we put a high signal on 1 and 3 and a low signal on 2 and 4, the motor is going to rotate in one direction. But if we switch it and put a high on 2 and 4 and a low on 1 and 3, the motor is going to turn in the other direction. That's your basic H-bridge circuit. So that circuit consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then when we put our base resistors on there, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12 components times five motors, we have a total of 60 components. That's a lot of work. There has to be an easier way to do it. And there is. How about an IC that has not one, but two H bridges built into it? Got to make sure I get the right number of chips here or pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that IC is called the L293D. And it is a dual H bridge. And all we need to do is use three of these ICs, right? Simple. So let's talk about the pinouts for them. So first of all, imagine this chip split in half. Two separate chips here, okay? So what we have here on pin number one is motor one enable. And then we have in one and out one. The next two pins are ground. Then we have out two and in two. And over here we have our motor power, which we call VS. Now on this other side of the chip, we have enable two in three, out three. And we're drawing my grounds upside down. I know that's not correct, but it's just easier for us to see. 
out four, in four, and chip power VSS. So we're going to concentrate on just one motor for today's video. So let's zoom in here a little bit. Now these motors are three volt motors. So we're going to use a three volt power supply. So we will put three volts on the chip power and we will put three volts on the motor power. We're going to go ground to ground and enable one. We're also going to send to the three volts to pull it high. So it is enabled. We will connect our motor across out one and out two. And then all we need to do is put our signals on in one or in two, and we'll be able to reverse the direction of the motor. Now, I just so happen to have what we need. There's our L293D, and it's already wired up, just like we talked about here. Let me get it set up with the motor, and we'll give it a shot. Everything is wired up, just like we had in the diagram. Let me shut this light off here real quick, so you can see we are putting three volts in. Okay? Now, there is our out one and out two going to the motor. Our in one and our in two are right here. And I'm pulling off that rail right here with this wire. So if I connect that wire to in one, the motor rotates in one direction, connect it to in two, and it rotates the other direction. So you can see pretty simple how that works. Now all we need to do is set up three of these chips, put it all together, bring in our Arduino, and then we can program it. That's going to be in the next part. I hope you guys enjoyed this part. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks to all my patrons. This was purchased with patron money. That's it. I'm out. Peace.